What's going on guys? Today we have a quick little painting video. We're kind of uh, pinched for time. This will be uploaded while we're on vacation. I'm, I'm going to have it as a scheduled upload. But uh, we are just taking an older project and we're doing a quick paint job on it. Um, this is my finished Maroons Razor from Skyrim. Um, that I 3D printed and painted. Um, I did this. I did not do a video about it. I just this was just a side project, and I did some texturing and some experimental stuff on it. Um, it turned out okay. Um, you can see a seam here, and there's some flaws here and there, but uh, this was coated in XTC 3D, and then painted with silver and black, were the only two colors. Uh, so we've got the knife and then the scabbard for it is here and this was printed I think on uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height and so it's going to be a similar uh, color pattern with the weathering and stuff with the I basically weathered the silver by kind of specking it with black and I weathered the black by specking it with silver so it was just a two-tone knife and you can use a lot of tricks to make it realistic looking. We're using a lot of those same tricks for the scabbard and they're going to be like mounted on the wall like something like this or side to side something similar. Um, it doesn't actually fit into the scabbard. It's the right size but where the scabbard is has a thicker wall on the inside it doesn't actually fit into it but it was just for display purposes anyway so we're gonna get on with using some of our enamel here our silver enamel because all this has been done is glued right here at the halfway point and then spray painted with uh, flat black so this is a real quick uh, rough paint job done, to do on this old project that I've had laying around and I never got to finish. So uh, we're going to get right into it. Alright guys, so we're just going to use the dry brush method to begin with here on uh, the bigger parts and we'll come in with a smaller brush in a moment and do some detail so like I said this is kind of a real quick video here that we have some time to do so I'm gonna go ahead and get an old project kind of finished here And where this is wall mounted, I'm only painting one side um, for what you can see. So I'm just trying to get it uh, covered here. Not really dry brushed. I shouldn't have said dry brush. I'm covering it first and then I'll dry brush it with black to weather it in a moment. So let me see. And we can go back and fix those mistakes in a moment. Okay, and then this up here is silver.
just kind of hitting hitting it with another coat in a couple spots to give it some contrast because the black kind of really darkens it down okay I like the looks of that now we'll come in with a smaller brush and we'll get the oblivion symbol here We can touch up any spillovers with black after the fact. It might take a couple coats on uh, key details like this too. So. So I'm going to get these edges here and then we're going to let this dry with the heat gun and then we'll come back with the black and fix any spillovers and mistakes. Okay, so I made a slight discovery here. Uh, the trusted sterling silver color that I do for all my metallic looking projects. Uh, I bought a larger bottle of it here and it's not sterling silver. They switched the words and it's silver sterling. And yes, it's a completely different color. <laughs> so I'm going to try to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel on what's left of this little bottle here to highlight some of the more uh, intricate details because it has a higher shine, almost like tin foil, and this one has kind of a matte, kind of grayish, uh, metallic-y flake kind of finish. So I'm going to highlight some of it with this and then we can uh, let that dry and then I'll go back and fix some of the mistakes with the black and we'll try some very light uh, dry brushing on the black parts with the silver and on the silver parts with the black just like we did with the blade to give it some weathering and kind of a demonic kind of look like it had in the game. So it has a, a way higher gloss factor and it, it's just more convincing looking that it's actually metal than it is um, than the uh, grayish metallic paint here is. So I'm going to just kind of highlight the edges with it and use it to our advantage to try to like do some highlighting at the same time. This ring here, we can uh, hit with it, make it pop a little bit. This wasn't the highest quality print, 
Um, I had some trouble with this print actually being successful. I, I tried it several times and it kept failing. Um, you'll notice a couple spots on this like these little horns are gone from the front. Um, this was the most successful copy I had from all my attempted prints on it. It was just a difficult print for one reason or the other. <clears throat> but um, I figured this one was savable and if we put a pretty decent paint job on it and display it with the dagger it'll look pretty good so I just kind of ran with it. And paint jobs like this don't have to be super neat because we're weathering it and all this and it will just kind of look like it blends in after we're done. So I'm not being super picky and neat on this one as you guys have probably already guessed. Let's get some highlights down here on this edge. Some of these angles that run down. And yeah, when you're uh, really desperate for uh, one of your colors and you're almost out you can always just split the bottle open like we've done here to get the to get the rest of the paint out desperate times call for desperate measures I suppose So we're just kind of highlighting some high points here with this uh, sterling silver color. And we'll come back and weather it with some black in a moment. Alright, so let's let this dry, hit it with the heat gun, and we'll come back and do some repairs with the black and some weathering on the silver parts. Okay, we're on to the black. We're going to go around our outlines here to make them clean. It's always way easier to tell what you're doing when you're using a dark color against a lighter background, in my opinion.
Okay, so we touched up most of the little mess up parts here and there. Let me get these last couple. But uh, now we're going to let that dry. And we're going to go in with some weathering and texture effects with the opposite colors of paint. So like silver on the black and then black on the silver and see how it turns out if it matches the sword good enough or the dagger good enough. Then we'll uh, display them together and it'll be complete. We're going to do some of the texturing here and we're just going to kind of dot it like so to get kind of that dirty, kind of muddy look to it. I'm just kind of dipping the edge of my brush in this and then patting it off on a pad or a cloth or something dry and then I just kind of dot it onto the project and if you get a bad spot that's too much just you can wipe it off with a finger because the paint that's already on it has already dried so that's looking pretty good to me and then let's get this up here with the same same uh, method. It just kind of adds some like age or like realisticness to it, like something that's old or that's been used. Let's get another layer on that. That one didn't really come across very uh, strongly. Get a couple dark splotches in there just to remind ourselves we're serious about it. Okay, and let's just really lightly get the logo because we don't want to overdo it and kill the detail there. Alright, now let's do that same method with the silver onto the black and we should get roughly the same effect that we got over here. And also we're going to spray it with some clear coat because that's what I did to the dagger. You got to be real careful with this part because it, it comes off a lot more onto the black like more noticeable so if you don't want it to just be all kind of mud mixed together you gotta kind of take it easy I'm pretty happy with that. It has a realistic kind of texture to it now. It matches the blade really well. So uh, let's hit it with some clear coat and see how it looks. Okay, we're using a dusty old plastic uh, barrel lid so I don't get my floor all coated with clear coat. So we're going to just kind of lightly cover it here with a layer of this and it should really make it shine I think I just need one layer like I did with the other one so let's let that dry and see what it looks like and if it's not quite there we'll have to put another coat on Okay, so it's still kind of matte coated after the first coat. It's not as glossy as the uh, blade itself. So we're going to go ahead and hit it with another layer here.
kind of hit it heavy this time just to try to get a good coat on it. All right, guys, so here we have the scabbard complete, and it goes really well with the dagger. Um, it's a little darker than the dagger because we use less of the actual sterling silver color but I think it still turned out pretty good. We went with two coats of the clear Krylon um, clear coat and I think we achieved a pretty good look for it. Anyways guys, so that's the finished scabbard there. Thanks for watching. I post every Saturday morning and if you enjoyed, consider subscribing and leaving a like. It really helps out. Um, this was a real quick video. We were kind of pinched for time this time. My forge should be up and running soon for more blacksmithing videos where I moved it into the garage here. Um, if you guys hadn't watched the video of the garage tour of the uh, garage that we converted from a carport into a garage, um, check that one out. Anyways guys, a lot of projects uh, I plan on doing, um, like blacksmithing and more 3D printing, more painting, um, and a few um, restoration videos as well coming up. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.